This is HR in Review, a podcast dedicated to HR thought leadership, actionable advice and all the latest developments in human resource management. Welcome to this episode of the HR in Review show. I'm your guest host today, Bill Bannum. And in this episode, we welcome one of my world of work heroes to the show, William Tinkup, to chat about all things recruitment and HR technology. Listen as we discuss William's recent experiences at the Sherm Conference and Expo, his latest tips for projecting a powerful employer brand, and his thoughts on the anticipated and yet rather unusual recession ahead. William is the president over at Recruiting Daily and a member of multiple boards of advisors. At the intersection of HR and technology, he's a writer, speaker, advisor, consultant, investor, storyteller, and teacher. And he's written hundreds of HR articles, spoken at over 150 HR and recruiting conferences, and conducted over 1,000 HR podcasts. This edition of HR in Review is a special guest episode brought to you in partnership with our friends at the North American-based HR Chat podcast, a podcast focused on interviews with HR, talent, and tech experts. William, welcome to the HR in Review show today. Absolutely. Thanks, Bill, for having me. So listeners, I'm such a fanboy of Mr. Tincup here. For those UK listeners who, um, well, they, you should all have heard of William Tincup, but he's particularly huge this side of the pond. Uh, I can say that because I'm currently in, in Toronto as I record this one. Um, if if, if uh, you want to know about recruitment and branding and recruitment tech, this is your guy. We have got a major celebrity for you today uh, William beyond my, my fanboy remarks though why don't you tell the HR and review listeners a little bit about yourself and about recruiting daily well the mutual admiration goes both ways uh, I've been a fan <laughs> of, of your work for a long time as well um, to to know me is to uh, know that I've studied HR and recruiting especially the both the practitioners as well as the technology for over 20 years and I love HR and, and HR practitioners and recruiting and recruiting practitioners. And uh, again, as I said, I've studied from different vantage points, a consulting firm, an ad agency, market research. And with Recruiting Daily, um, I still focus on a lot of HR uh, because we believe the, the, the core of HR is recruiting and that if you get recruiting done well, then everything else in HR is easier. If you don't, <laughs> then everything in HR is not as easy as it could be. So uh, I still spend a lot of time talking to a lot of, you know, payroll providers and core HRS and performance management, things outside of traditional HR, because there's linkage. There's always linkages to these other systems and other processes. Um, but I just, I love it. I, I speak at conferences. Obviously, I podcast. Um, and, uh, and again, I'm, I love, I actually, I used to write a lot. I don't write as much, uh, bad, bad on me, but I, uh, but I used to write a lot and, uh, I've just found that it's far easier for me to talk than it is for me to write. I'm a four strider. And, uh, so I enjoy podcasting and just talking to people. Well, that's that's the beauty of transcriptions, isn't it? Eh? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. So, Good point. <laughs> so, listeners, before we uh, before we hit record today, William William said to me, "Bill, what what are we doing? Are, are we just catching up? Are we recording something?" And I said, "Well, why don't we do both? Why don't we wait to catch up um, after after we hit record?" So, I briefly saw uh, the beautiful man himself at the Sherm annual conference in new orleans uh, and didn't stop away. to say hello mind you. well did not well, stop to say hello I, I stood there awkwardly for a couple of minutes actually william <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but you were you were recording podcasts at the time right. so t- tell me what, why we why you were at sherm uh, tell our listeners who perhaps are not as familiar about sherm yeah th- it, sherm's basically the kind of the the national association of hr professionals in, in the u.s I think they've got a presence in India and some other places as well. But uh, think of it as like CIPD in in uh, in England. Um, it's it's kind of that organization that kind of helps keeps track of compliance and laws 
and uh, and also tries to help you know where they can with uh, I think younger HR professionals um, and uh, their annual conference draws I don't know 15,000 people so it's large enough uh, what we were doing at the show was interviewing um, the technology vendors and basically getting their take on what they see in the marketplace. And uh, it's really always interesting to kind of see, because you can talk to a practitioner, you know, chief people officer, and get one take, and then literally talk to a vendor that they use and get a completely different take on the market. Uh, and it's that juxtaposition that's always interesting to me. So we did, uh, we were actually in the, in the main hallway which, you know, was a lot of traffic and it was fun because people would just walk by and like, what are you doing? Like, you know, and we're in the middle of podcasting and it's, it's just a fun bit. I think it was kind of fun theater, if you think of it like that. Um, but we talked to a lot of vendors and just really what we're trying to get is a finger on the pulse of what they perceived as the market uh, and the buyers uh, and what, they, what, what was driving buyers' decisions these days. Why not subscribe to the premium version of HR in Review? You'll get ad-free content, early and extra episodes and more. Even better, although it's the premium edition, it's absolutely free. Sign up at hrreview.co.uk slash podcast. And generally, are they optimistic? Are they terrified of this apparently looming recession uh, that, that well, might be coming up uh, later this year? What, what, what's, what's the general know, sort of outlook? I think we talk ourselves into recessions. So I'm one of these people that basically believes that if we keep talking about how that something's going to be negative, that it ultimately means self-fulfilling prophecy. Like, oh, okay, there's a recession coming. Let's stop spending. Well, if you stop spending, <laughs> turns out uh, you, you go into a recession. Um, I think the I think the bit that vendors vendors are optimistic because they saw this at the beginning of COVID, kind of an overreaction and layoffs and then all of a sudden four months later it was oh not are we back in business we're back in business with a vengeance and so they're optimistic uh i think hr i think hr has been through the war i mean i really you know from from you know go all the way back to january of 20 to today and it's just an emotional roller coaster anyone that's been in hr knows that it's just the the, the the ground beneath you is just moving as you're doing things. And there's no stability uh, in, in the sense of, even if you take the economic stuff off the table, there's this idea of the polarization between, you know, everyone back at the office every day, let's, let's say Tesla. And then you go on the other end of the spectrum, you know, we don't have an office. There are no offices. It's remote forever, Airbnb. And then everything in the middle is some form of hybrid. And no one's got their finger on, on what that looks like or what that should look like. Every company is going to have its own kind of unique fingerprint on what that looks like. And so they were just dealing with that, which is complex enough. And oh, by the way, talent was in you know a shortage and hard to reach. And candidates think in seconds, minutes, and hours. And, and oh, now you throw in economic uncertainty um i do not uh i do not I, I think they're just i mean it's almost like ptsd our form of ptsd i don't i think they're numb if i were being honest i think most practitioners most hr practitioners are just numb right now they just want some some normalcy just anything just anything so that looks like normalcy even if it's a new normalcy that's fine just something and so I think there's a, a great apprehension and anxiety that when you talk to practitioners, it's like, hey, how are you doing? <laughs> What's going on? How can I help? You know, because it's just, it's, it's I, I think the toughest job in corporate, I will say corporate America, but in corporate period. Yeah, but roller coaster periods like this, they're, they're good for guys like me and you, William. It, it gives us plenty of things to talk about, right? Um, <laughs> good for us. Okay, so not so no, not for, so much good for <laughs> good for them living in a day to day. But but again, somebody's got to make sense of it. So I, I think that there is the you're, you're kidding aside. There is a utility yeah. for people that play on the periphery that can actually say, okay, here's what we're seeing and make sense. And when I say make sense, give some color commentary to 
maybe there is more optimism than we're seeing initially. Uh, maybe maybe the, in this uncertainty, there is some things that are more certain than not. And so I think we can actually help. Uh, so yes, it does make for good theater and good ratings and good TV and all that other stuff. But it also, I think we can do uh, a good service too. Well, what has been certainty over the last year or so uh, has been this tremendous battle, a war for for any kind of talent, not just top talent. You know, I, I think I think people stopped talking about attracting top talent quite some time ago, William. It's about right. getting anybody. Yeah. Um, warm what, bodies. What, what do you What do you think? <laughs> warm bodies in the room. Uh, what, what's, what What have been those challenges for organisations during 2022? And as we are now talking in the context of potentially. Uh, talking ourselves into a recession. How, right. how might those challenges change throughout sure. the rest of this year? The first part is simple and complex simultaneously. It's simple in the fact that uh, because of the consumerization of technology and our expectations on everything consumer, so take something like Facebook or texting, you know, on your phone, you text me, you expect me to text you back. Okay, you, you order something and you're on Uber Eats and you expect to see the car driving and you know when it's going to be at your doorstep. So this expectation of smartphones and consumerization of technology is bled over into candidates. And so they think literally they you have that just moment of a, attraction or attention of engagement. You have a moment where they're interested and this could be hourly or corporate salaried employees there's a moment in which they're uh, interested they show their interest and then corporate is not accustomed to the speed the rapidity in which we have to respond so response rates if we if we do marketing lingo this is what we would call marketing uh, you know response rates what are the response rates like how fast do we get back to so and so uh, you know, this has been in the support business uh, and marketing and even sales for, you know, <laughs> tens of years. Uh, and so not a new concept, new to recruiting, new to talent acquisition in general, is that their candidates are moving faster than they can move. And that's process, that's technology, that's mindset, that's the way that they collaborate, that's a nine-step interview process. It's all that stuff that basically slows everything down. And candidates then get disinterested. Worse than that, they have a bad experience. Um, and so, you know, everyone's got a Twitter account. So now they 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 now can actually do harm to your to your employment brand. Um, so I, I think. As we look at like anything that's happened up till now, so the once the great rehire started to happen up until just most recently, and even in pockets, it's still very, very active. Uh, you're just not fast enough. Like you've you literally got to, as an, a talent acquisition professional, even HR professional, you've got to just basically go, how do we think instead of months, weeks, and days, how do we think in you know, hours, minutes, and seconds? And that is a completely tear down and build back up with the mindset of response rate, the top of mind. And so that's that part. The second part is, okay, with this slowdown, impending slowdown, how will it change things? It won't. <laughs> so the good news <laughs> is everything I just said is still true, even in an economic downturn. Candidates now just... They, they don't care that you're slow. They just perceive you as slow. And if you're slow, you, if you respond to them a day later, two days later, six days later, okay, this is going to take five days. That language of no, like two or three years ago is just normal. Like we're going to get the team together. Everybody's going to review. It's going to take us about four days. Expect on the fifth day, we're going to be able to call you. Yeah, that doesn't work. That's dead. That's just dead. And it was dead in a moment, in a, in a moment where the candidates, the candidate, what we call a candidate-driven market, and it's dead in an employer-driven market. If we think that the candidates are going to behave differently, we're sadly, sadly mistaken. They're just not going to behave differently. They're going to behave the exact same way. They're going to have the exact same expectations. Doesn't matter if it's if it's a surplus, surplus or scarcity of talent. Surely, if 
times get hard and, and folks are getting a little bit desperate that they're not able to find a position as easy as, as they are at the moment as we record this right. then they're, 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 they're going to be willing to put up with more stuff aren't they or are, are we nope. just are we, are we really past that now we're really past that with millennials and gen z in particular they'd rather not work that's that's the that's the for for on gen x for for people like me we just fight through it. Okay, you're gonna put a five thousand word job description in front of me. Okay, well, yeah, I'll read it. You know, like we'd accept things. Okay, you want me to go through a ten step interview process? Oh, okay, well, yeah, seems reasonable. They're just unwilling, absolutely unwilling. It doesn't matter. Oh, we can't pay or make our bills. You know what? I'm moving my my mom and dad. I'm not going to suffer the the tragedy of the people that came for, before me, this is going to work in the way, in the terms that I want it to work or I won't work. <laughs> it's baffling for people of my age. It is absolutely baffling because that's not how we behaved. We just kind of adapted. Oh, okay. You want us to jump through that hoop? Yep, jumping through that hoop. They're not going to do that. They, they've they already proven uh, during COVID and before COVID that they're unwilling to sacrifice what their belief system is. And they believe that, and it, you can call it an entitlement, I guess, but they believe strongly that you should treat them like human beings. <laughs> so so normally, you know, Bill, you and I have been through a bunch of employer-driven markets and the, and the talent that, you know, comes back and they basically behaves sure, themselves. Yeah, yeah that's, that's just that those days are over. And okay. it's, it's adapt or die. <laughs> And and then again, you want the talent. If you think because there's going to be surplus and what's called an employer-driven market, if you think that you can then get away with things, you're not going to be able to, and still recruit. Okay, and I mean that that's just staggering, by the way. Because um. <laughs> <laughs> it's so contrary to what you and I would do and think. I mean, that's what's baffling about it, and it but it, it's baffling and it's true. So. It's you know when I put it in front of you, yeah. But if they need to get a job, and then your reply is, well, they just they just won't get a job because these, right. these, these guys have got different principles. That, that's 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 right. But, that's right. Wow. Okay. But so what 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 jobs will remain in demand though? You know, through if if heaven forbid we do go through difficult times over the next twelve months, uh, well, I in think, terms of the economy, what yeah, what, what think... we will what 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 jobs are going to remain? You know, very much highly in demand. Well, it's the, the two easiest ones is anything in healthcare or healthcare related. We don't make enough worldwide. We don't make, make enough talent to deal with the needs of today, much less the needs of tomorrow. So anyone that's going into nursing or, or, or even just anywhere in healthcare, quite frankly, there's just not enough bodies. And anywhere in the software uh, world. So you can kind of define that anywhere, anywhere you like, front-end developers, back-end developers, full-stack developers, React developers, JavaScript. It can be anything. Anything in technology, again, worldwide, doesn't matter if we're talking about Belarus or Nigeria, or US or wherever, we don't make enough. The, the planet doesn't make enough of that talent to consume the needs of today, much less tomorrow. Those, those two areas, recession-proof. The next two questions I've got for you, these are questions that we ask of all of our guests. Sure, okay? sure, sure. Um, so you're, you're special to me, but this is, uh, it's one that we, we, we pose to all of our guests. And I'm going to challenge you to answer in one minute or less. Okay. If, if, you could, if you could pass on one crucial lesson that you've learned in your career, what would your top tip be for HR and talent pros? Just just get really great at the ability to listen of what's being said and not being said. I think I think that's listening creates space. Listening creates flexibility. Listening creates all of the things that we need it to if we listen. But it's it's hard. It's very difficult. And, and uh, so um, but that's my advice is actually to hone your listening skills. OK, I hear you. I hear you. Um, <laughs> well and, done. <laughs> well played. <laughs> what is the single biggest change that you think will happen in HR over the next five to 10 years? I think the single biggest change is we're going to get better at understanding what needs to be automated and uh, what, what should be automated versus what needs more human touch. 
Um, and I think the first couple of years of AI and machine learning is has been hard for us to get come to grips with because we've seen it as a challenge uh, to our jobs, et cetera. But I think we're going to get good. I really believe this. That we're going to get really good at understanding there's just certain tasks that a machine should do. And there's certain tasks that a human being should do. And so the bifurcation of those two things is where I believe we're just going to get great at. I really believe this, that it's going to take time. It's not going to be easy. Totally get all that stuff. But it's this, the line in which we, and the and line for every company and every HR professional is going to be a little bit different, but it's understanding what, where, where the machine is better positioned to do the task and where the human needs to spend more time and be more human. And I think, I think that in and of itself, it, I'm, it's, I'm making it sound easy. It's nothing about it is easy. It's going to be, it's going to be challenging, but uh, I think that's where our future lies is on really understanding and have a finger on the pulse of what needs to be automated, what needs more human touch. Okay, perfect. And just finally for today, how can how can our listeners connect with and more about you, William? I mean, you're all over the place. They can check out your podcast, they can go to <laughs> daily. Yeah. Uh, any events that are coming up for you? Are you yeah, um, great, great question. So you could just Google William Tinkup and you can find out all my contact information. I'm pretty easy to find. Um, I'm doing a, a bit, I'm doing a conference in Singapore at the end of, of August which I'm excited. I love the organization that puts it together and it's just going to be a fun, you know, I love Singapore. So there's that. Um, and then we have a recruiting daily has an event in September. It's a recruitment. It's a tech sourcing and tech tech recruiting event where it's free. And we're just going to train sourcers and recruiters on how to find technical talent. Um, because again, it's still, still hard to find these, uh, these folks and engage with them and then get them into the right position. So, uh, that's, I think the 28th and 29th of September, but you can, you can go to recruitingdaily.com and find out all about it. It's, I programmed it and it's 54 different trainers training on 30 minutes on one tip each. And so it's a, it's kind of a, kind of an interesting concept for, for a training event. And so, but I've got a, a bunch of user conferences and other stuff after that, but but really, it's uh, I'm looking forward to uh, Singapore and uh, in our own event. And for those listeners in the UK who want to uh, maybe attend your event in September, is there an online component as well? Oh yeah, it's all personal? it's all yeah, it's a hundred percent virtual. And fantastic. Uh, even better than that, even with the time difference, um, everything's recorded. So it's free. I mean, you know, like the barriers to entry are, are really low here. It's free. Uh, everything's recorded and it's training. It's not a conference. Uh, and conferences are extremely important. Uh, but this is this is training. People are like, uh, one gal's actually going to train on how to source uh, technical talent using emojis. Which, of course, when when she told me about this, I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. She goes, okay, so you go into Google and you put cloud, and then you put the cloud emoji, and then you put the other keywords that you're searching for, and it will search for engineering talent using the cloud emoji. It's crazy. Wow. And, and again, I mean, mind-blowing. Like, right? I don't do this stuff. But I, I'm but too I'm, old now. I, I'm I just don't fascinated. know about this anymore. Like, you can actually source <laughs> talent on LinkedIn using emojis, like it's crazy. But so that like, that's a 30 minute session. Her name's Sophie. Sophie's uh, gonna do a 30 minute bit and that's gonna be the, her whole bit. That's all she's gonna do is teach people how to do that. And so it's easy to register for, it's easy to watch the videos. You can attend for the times you want, call it, and you can Netflix the content, the training content afterwards. And I think it just, it's our way of giving back and helping people that's why it's training um because we don't want to be in a conference business a but also it's we, we want to help people kind of skill up and get better at sourcing and finding talent okay and uh i think william mentioned there it's free it and is it's recorded yep. and it's accessible whenever you like so um get involved that there'll be oh, yeah. there'll be links in the show notes as well listeners so you can find it all there absolutely well this has been wonderful thank you bill William, thank you. I uh, I always get a bit gushing when I get you on the show, sir. 
Um, you are a hero of mine. I think you know this by now. And um, so, first. well, um, you are you are extraordinary, sir. And that just leads me to say for today, thank you very much for being my guest. Thank you for having me, and and thanks to to the audience. If you have any questions, please reach out. Happy to talk. The HR and Review podcast is brought to you by hrreview.co.uk. hrreview.co.uk is a website dedicated to human resources and related professionals. News items are posted daily together with analysis looking in-depth at topical HR issues. You can sign up for our range of specialist newsletters at hrreview.co.uk slash sign up and follow us on Twitter at HR Review or join us on LinkedIn and Facebook. Thank you for listening.